Hey guys, so today we'll talk about a logistic regression, sometimes called a logit regression. And you'll understand the difference between this regression, the logarithmic one, and the linear one that we did before. So let's review to the, to the uh, regular linear regression, right? We have the two axes, we have an independent variable x, and the dependent variable y. And we have a whole bunch of random points, right? Random observations. And what we do is we want to fit a line through these points that minimizes the residuals, the square of the residuals, right? Check out the video we did on this topic to get a better in-depth understanding, right? But this is for continuous data, right? Where x is something like height, for example, where you can be a, a whole bunch of different heights, right? You can be like five feet, 7.2 inches, right? And it can, it can be as, as, um, as exact as you want. But what about something where it's a discrete binary variable? For example, a team either wins or loses. You either pass a test or you fail a test. What do we do in that case? Um, well, this is where we use the logistic regression, right? Um, so let's take a look at an example of x and y variables, right? So we have our explanatory variables, x and y, right? Um, and let's talk about, for example, um, credit, right? So a bank, when you go to a bank and you ask for a loan, they calculate how likely are you to default or not to default. So a one would be that you default, that you don't make payments, and that a zero would be that you do make payments, that you're good, they wanna give you um, the, the, the credit, right? And let's take a look at x, the explanatory variable here, for example, age, right? Because um, it's one of the variables that the banks use because younger people are more likely to default. So we would have somebody that's like 23, year old, 23 years old and they do default, and somebody 44, year old, 44 years old and they don't, and then maybe a, a 36 year old and they also default for whatever reason, right? And we just keep going and we have a whole bunch of one, zero, zero, one, blah, 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 all the way down, right? What would this look like? We would have the y-axis and the x-axis just like before. And we have a whole bunch of points, right? So this would be age and this would be default, either yes or no. But instead of randomly being distributed up like all over the place, there, it would be something like down here, right? Something like this, right? And then the, the line that we draw, it's not a straight line like in the OLS regression, it would be something like this, right? Where this would be zero and this would be one. And this is now the line that we wanna, that we wanna make. So how do we draw this line? Well, we need to understand something called odds, right? You probably hear this a lot in sports betting. So the odds is defined as P divided by one minus P. What's a good example of this? So let's say your favorite football team has an 80% chance of winning. So P is equal to 08, right? So then the odds of that team winning would be what? 0 0.08 divided by one minus 0.8, otherwise known as 0.8 divided by 0.2 or four. So if the team has an 80% chance of winning, right, it's either a one or a zero, winning or losing, we say that they have four to one odds of winning, right? Now, here's where the logistic regression comes into play. We take the log of this right here, right? Um, now, in different cases, you'll see log base different values, but in our case, let's just take uh, the natural log, right? Log base E. So it would be ln of P one over P. And this equals to just like before, beta zero plus beta one X, right? And where the X is the, the variable, the independent variable. Now let's play around with this to get just the P equals because that's what we want, right? In the end, we want something like the probability of something happening at one or zero equals to something, something, something. So how do we get just P out of this messy equation? Well, because we have log base E, the natural log, let's take everything to the power E, right? So obviously E to the ln of P one minus P just equals because it's the property of logs, P 
P over 1 minus P, right? Because e to the power of natural log of anything is just that anything, right? And then this equals 2. Now e, right, because we're taking e to the power of both sides, beta 0 plus beta 1x. Huh, now we're a little bit closer, right? We got rid of the nasty lo logarithm. So how can we rewrite this? Um, let's multiply both sides by 1 minus p. So we have p equals 1 minus p e to the beta 0 plus beta 1x, right? And we draw the little hats because um, these are estimated, right? They're estimated coefficients. And then this equals to, if we just multiply both sides, it, um, not both sides, I'm sorry, if we multiply everything in the parentheses by e, we have e to the beta 0 plus beta 1x minus p e to the beta 0 plus beta 1x, right? Now, um, if we carry over the p to this side, we have p, this p, plus this, this term right here, p e to the beta 0 plus beta 1 x equals what's left here, e to the beta 0 plus beta 1 x, right? Now, as you can see, we, we can take p out of this and factor it out. Um, where can we do this? Um, well, I'll just write it over here. It would be p 1 plus e to the beta 0 plus beta 1 x, right? Does that make sense? We just take the p out and put it over here. And then now that you can see we have the p by itself and we can rewrite this over here just like we wanted, p equals, and then we divide both sides by this. So what we're left with is e to the beta 0 plus beta 1 x divided by 1 plus e to the beta 0 plus beta 1 x. Right, that's the equation for this curve, and it's always between 0 and 1. Now, depending on the estimated coefficients, the beta 0 and the beta 1, it will be shifted, right? So it doesn't necessarily start at 0 when x is equal to 0. It can be shifted, and that all depends, obviously, on the data that you have. And these beta coefficients are determined in the same way. So check out the previous video to get the, ve the vector form of the betas, right? Um, and just as a final note, sometimes you'll see this re rewritten um, in a different way because if we multiply everything here, where can I multiply? If we multiply everything over here by e to the minus beta 0 plus beta 1x, so essentially we're just multiplying by 1, right? but we want to get rid of the ugly too many e's. If we multiply both sides of, uh, not both sides, I'm sorry, the, the numerator and the denominator by this, we will end up with almost the same thing, right? So if we multiply e to the power of something times e to the minus that power, we just get one, right? And then multiply one by e to the minus, and then e to the e to the minus, so, and flip it over. So what we have is one plus e to the minus beta 0 plus beta 1 x, right? And this form looks a little nicer because we only have one e term and it looks less confusing. But it's still, it's the same equation, right? You can double check if you don't believe me. If you multiply this by the negative and this by the negative, it becomes the same thing, right? And then that's it. Just like I said before, the betas are determined in the same way. We have the same uh, regression, even though it's not linear this time. And this is how a lot of things are determined that have to do with probability, that are binary. So um, just, just to recap, if we know, if the bank knows that somebody is now not 23, not 44, not 36, but say 29 years old, somewhere I guess over here, so they want to see what would be the probability of them defaulting, and it would be somewhere in the middle. And that's how this is determined. So I hope you guys like this video about logistic regressions. Please check out our other videos, click like, subscribe, and stay geekly, my friends.